everyone, it's Melanie, and welcome back to Living Luxuriously for Less, where we celebrate, decorate, and enjoy everyday life for less. If you're interested in weddings, events, decor, backdrops, floral centerpieces, or baby showers, parties, or events, you're in the right place. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some rare behind the scene footage along with a few tips and tricks that I would like to share on how to host a wedding and a reception in the same room without having to conduct a full room flip. So without any further delay, let's hop right in. So let's start by kind of defining exactly what a room flip is. It is basically when you have one room to host both a wedding ceremony and a wedding reception. So typically what you would see is the, the um, space initially decorated with just tables and chairs and no head tables, no um sweetheart tables you would basically just see the guest chairs and owl runner and a ceremony um, altar area that you would typically see in a church however when you're doing a room flip it is imperative that you have all hands on deck doing a complete room flip typically takes about 30 minutes to an hour depending on how large your team is now, if the venue that you're in only has the one room, if there's inclement weather outside, it makes it extremely difficult to do a complete room flip without causing utter chaos in the venue. And thus was the case with this particular venue. What we opted to do was to set up the uh, guest area in the tables that we would use for the actual um, ceremony that we would use for the actual reception and for the ceremony portion we decided to remove the get uh, the head tables and the sweetheart tables in order to create an altar area and that's exactly what we did the dance floor served kind of as an aisle the sweetheart table that you see there in the middle was removed and that is where the bride and the groom would stand and the guest tables on either side would also serve as the areas in which the bridal party would stand. So everything across the front of the room was removed and the guests were allowed to be seated comfortably at their tables, which uh, kind of removes the need to move around in order for the room to be flipped. Now room flips work really well when you have an, maybe a lobby or uh, some type of area that the guests could go to to enjoy a cocktail hour while you're flipping the space. But there, if there's no cocktail hour uh, built into the menu or built into the, uh, the schedule of events or the itinerary, then it's really difficult to do a room flip with people in the room and guests being seated. It can just be very chaotic. And so where you see the candles and the table, there is where the bride and groom eventually stood. The minister was right there in the center of the backdrop, between, flanked between the two floral centerpieces. So when photos were being taken, all you could see was a gorgeous backdrop with chandeliers and the four large floral centerpieces that were located in the back. Since the caterer was also located in the same space, we opted to drape the catering area to cover the tables just enough to make the room still be very elegant and refreshing as the guests entered in. And you could see the area where the draping curtains were pulled back so that the guests could enter in on the left side and out on the right side once they got their food. I felt like this was a very elegant addition to the wedding because I don't really like food being exposed at a wedding, but it's exposed, but just enough so that the guests know that they're there. But after a, after the food was being, uh, everyone was served, we were able to close those curtains and the caterers were allowed to break down without being disruptive to the entire wedding ceremony. My next tip is that when you're doing a room flip or a partial room flip in this case, you want to make sure that you set the room up first for the reception and get the photos, the videos, and all the footage that you need 
because you probably won't have time to grab that before um, the room flip is complete. So because you're typically really pressed for time, once the room flip is complete, the bride and groom and the bridal party is ready to do their grand entrance again and you really don't have time to take photos and you may not be able to capture those images. So what we did was that we first set up the room for the reception. We got all of the photos and videos and all of the footage that we needed, all of the detail shots, and then we flipped it to the actual ceremony portion and we got the shots of that. And once the ceremony started, we did not have to worry about grabbing those key shots and photos that we would later use for marketing and advertising because we had already gotten them before. And it also helped my team to know exactly where everything needed to be placed so that when we were able to um, start doing the room flip, they were very efficient in the time. And it only took us a few minutes to get it totally finished. Next, when you're doing a room flip, you want to think about details that can serve as a double duty. For example, a dance floor that can also serve as an owl runner, a backdrop that can also serve as a ceremony site, florals that can also serve as altar arrangements, and the like. So when you're doing that, you, your design for the room, you want to think of all of the small details from chandeliers that you can see hanging from the backdrop to the florals, to the um, floor, dance floors, to the owl runners. You want to think about all of those things that will add the beauty and the ambiance that you need in the room with minimal need for change. And that's exactly what we were able to do in this space. Now, unfortunately, my camera was not able to pick up of the absolute gorgeousness of the chandeliers against the backdrop due to the lights. But guys, you trust me, it was absolutely gorgeous. Next up, when you're doing a room flip, you also want to keep in mind you know, the reserve tables for those special guests such as parents and close family members that are not in the bridal party that need to be seated towards the front. The height of the centerpieces is also very, very important when you're doing both the ceremony and the reception in the same space. So for this particular design, we decided to use oversized centerpieces so that everyone could see very well both the wedding and the reception.
not least, I want to leave you guys with a few tips that you want to keep in mind when you have to do a partial or a total room flip for a wedding, baby shower, party, or event. And tip number one is that you don't want to get in such a rush that you forget the important details. The details such as the menu cards and beautiful napkin rings and napkin folds and uh, roses added and candle lights and all those wonderful things that need to be on your head table and your sweetheart tables, they need to be in place. And you want to keep those things in mind when you're designing your room. So proper planning is a must when you are flipping a space. The next thing you want to remember is symmetry. You want everything to be perfectly symmetrical in your space. For example, the gorgeous drapes with the chandeliers hanging over are perfectly symmetrical with the bridal party, the bridesmaid, the groomsmen with the bridal, um, the bride and the groom in the center. Also in terms of the decor, the floral arrangements along with the mixed bling, it was all symmetrical throughout the space. Symmetry is so important because you will not have the opportunity to go back and make any changes once the wedding starts. Remember, everything is in the same space and so timing is definitely of the essence. So you wanna make sure that you plan properly, that you pay attention to the details, that you think about items and decor elements that could be double duty. You wanna make sure you have the symmetry throughout the space and throughout the room. Finally, don't feel so rushed that you forget why you were hired. Even if it takes you a little bit longer than what you initially anticipated, I think it's much, much better to be a little late and to give the client exactly what they are expecting than to rush through the process and have a client that is extremely disappointed in the end. Now, ideally, you want to be on time, you want to be efficient, but you also have to deliver exactly what they had envisioned and what you discussed per your contractual agreements. You wanna make sure that you have enough individuals in the space to assist you with flipping the space, to assist you with designing it, and to assist with any mishaps that may occur while you're working in this short timing. I absolutely love you know, adding the beauty and elegance into the space. And so you wanna make sure that you have pieces that are quality, that are, um, are long lasting, because when you're moving in a hurry, you don't wanna deal with pieces that are so fragile that they may break while you're rushing. This is the reason why I purchased these uh, reversible trumpet vases from, um, I purchased them years ago, actually, from E. Favor Mart, along with the linens that you see and the beautiful tall pedestals that you see in the back. If you guys are interested in any of the decor elements that you see in this video outside of this custom head table uh, skirt, then I will link them down in the description box below. I absolutely love the way that everything turned out. The mix of the blush and the gray was absolutely gorgeous and such a uh, pleasant change and a welcome change uh, against all of the blush and gold weddings that I had done throughout this year. I'm so thankful for all of my clients. I've done more weddings this year than ever. It has been so great and I can't wait to share more with you. If you guys are interested in learning from me, if you're interested in where I purchase my items, be sure to visit the description box below. I am now accepting students into Lux Academy. Stay tuned for so much more information that is to come. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in Lux Academy, be sure to join us at luxacademy.podia.com. Along with, if you're interested in any of the information that I've shared with you guys in this video or any of the products that you've seen, I will definitely link them down below in between my eFavor Mart um, links and also my Amazon store. You will find it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss out 
on future exciting videos. I'll see you guys at the next one. Until next time, it's Melanie with Living Luxuriously for Less. Cheers!